Laning is the cornerstone of League of Legends skill. Unlike skills like team fighting and macro, you play a laning phase every single game. This means that if you can win laning phase the majority of the time, it's going to produce results much faster than improving any other aspect of your game. In this example, Faker on Ariana is playing against Zoe. Zoe's Q cooldown is 8 seconds at level 1, while Ariana's Q cooldown is 6. If Zoe uses her Q, Ori now has 8 seconds to walk up and win a trade. Zoe's Q is down, so Faker walks forward. He gets a Q poke in. Now Zoe's Q is up, Faker walks back again. Now again, Q is down, Faker walks forward. Q is up, Faker walks back. It's not flashy, there are no complex mechanics involved, just textbook contesting of space to punish Zoe's cooldowns. If he does this a few more times, he can build a very solid lane advantage, and he does. One thing that plagues most players when punishing cooldowns is the psychological disadvantage of low health. If a player uses all their cooldowns, at least consider whether you can punish their cooldown and trade back because they have no spells. Here, Irelia has no R and misses her E. Showmaker uses the window to punish her cooldowns and go forwards. At the same time, from Irelia's point of view, facing an 800 health disadvantage, there's a large psychological pressure for her to back off. However, the right play is to punish Yasuo's cooldown and go forward herself, which she does. It's also essential to factor minion damage into whether you'll win the trade when you go forward. In an example like this, even if Zoe uses Q, the minion wave is too big for Pantheon to attempt to punish, and Zoe will just turn on Pantheon and kill him if he does so. Always consider whether you can trade through the minions, or whether you should just let the opportunity go. In this example, Faker on TF is at a slight health disadvantage against Galio. Galio uses Q here, but chasing and attacking him is only going to result in as many minions hitting him back, making the trade negative overall. This next time, however, on Q cooldown, despite a large health deficit, there aren't as many minions, so you can punish. He also knows Galio level W due to the shield. Even though it's unintuitive to take this many hits from the minions, or go forward when this low, he can take advantage of Galio's Q cooldown and trade 100 health for 250. One thing that's very frequent is players giving each other too much space. In this example from a platinum level game, the mid laners are playing so far apart that I could park a car between them. Especially with a strong level 1 on Syndra and a weak level 1 on Morgana, there's no reason there should be this much space between the players. At this point in the lane, Syndra could have pressured Morgana so hard with her Qs and auto attacks, making it really difficult for Morgana to play the lane. Especially after Morgana Qs, Syndra should be going straight forward, especially with the minion advantage and no incoming minions. She should be punishing Morgana's cooldown with the space contest and preventing her from taking the safe passage back towards the tower. At the higher ranks, players are a lot more intentional with their spell usage. In order to contest these players, you need to learn to bait out spells. So every non-targeted spell has a range. Against most players, if you walk inside that range, the opponent will throw their spell. If you back off or sidestep immediately after entering the range, you'll be able to bait and dodge that spell. Against good players, you might need to do this multiple times in order to actually have them cast it because they'll be ready for it. In this clip is some great spell baiting by both Syndra and Zoe. Zoe successfully baits out the Syndra Q, however she unfortunately gets hit by the Syndra E. Using the principle from earlier, Knowing that Syndra now has no cooldowns, Zoe immediately goes on the offensive, trying to punish Syndra's Q and E cooldowns and get a trade back. Now that Zoe's Q is on cooldown, it's Syndra's turn to go forward, masterfully baiting out the Zoe's E by walking in and out of its max range. Don't make the mistake of blindly running straight at Zoe in a telegraph manner, only to be hit by her E and lose the trade. Instead, use the concept of spell baiting to make her cast her E and give yourself a window to punish. As you can see, even as early as level 1 or 2, the lane can be won, just from manipulating movement and punishing enemy cooldowns. This might sound like an exaggeration, 
but I can assure you that if you put the Platinum Syndra main against Showmaker, they'll find it almost impossible to even land a Q. So thanks for watching, and if this video helps you out, give it a like and subscribe, and I'll see you next time.